Well, good morning and welcome to another beginning drawing class. Um, I'm back in the coloring book again uh, and uh, another dragonfly, which is considerably different than the other one, but it just all comes down to what do you like. I happen to like dragonflies, so hopefully it, uh, it doesn't matter to you what we're going to do here. So. so first of all, I've got this light drawing here, and we're going to go over it so we can actually see it. So, now these coloring books are really quite nice. I, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this is the one, of course, Judy knows I like dragonflies, so she got this one for me. Now, I haven't done any coloring in it, but it's been a wonderful tool for this class for me because, uh, like I said, I like dragonflies and it gives me an opportunity to use the ideas, you know, simplify it, change it, do whatever, but it's a wonderful opportunity. So you can, you can take anything and use as uh, a tool for what you're doing. <clears throat> and you don't have to copy it exactly. But part of it is um, when you're doing a drawing, you have to get the relationships you know, accurate enough to where it actually looks like what it is that you're trying to duplicate. And then there's artistic license, and so that also determines what is important to you uh, about what is there and what you want there. And so there's uh, lots of opportunity for creativity and and that's as important as anything so um, when you look at the picture here um, they don't the left side and the lo and the right side don't uh, necessarily uh, match up exactly and and that doesn't matter either it's about creating something and uh, basically that's what they've done here. And so we're just going to come up with our own situation. But we want to do what we want to do, but at the same time, this is a wonderful um, opportunity to create something they've given us the idea here which is a lot of times um, you know especially like I say this is a beginning class and so gee what are we going to what are we going to do today and so you can get ideas from all over the place and then alter those according to your ability or your interest. So it's just, uh, it's, it's a whole process. And so that's what, that's what's important. And so this may look similar to what you'll see there. And again, that's not as important as creating something that you want to create. And we're going to add a little something there. Okay, and then
So the whole creative process, it doesn't matter, you know, whether you're creating a wonderful meal for the family or for yourself or you're doing some gardening or really doesn't matter. It's creating something that that you enjoy and hopefully will bring joy to other people. But that's just the byproduct. Uh, key is for the creator to enjoy the creative process. So creating is it's very satisfying and so using a lot of the rules that I've tried to share with you hopefully you're able to use those to your advantage so I'm just going to add something here <coughs> and then I want to get a body on here Now, when you look at the one there, now one of the things that you'll find as you're working is being able to adjust things in such a way that doesn't hinder what you were trying to accomplish in the beginning. So uh, to have the freedom, the flexibility to adjust as you go along they have here, which I kind of like, okay, and then we have a second wing over here. And once you have the wing, now we're, we're using uh, the coloring book as a guide because I just thought that the, uh, the way they did inside the wings was an interesting approach. And you can just use that basic concept to do all kinds of other ones. And so that's part of the process as well. Anyway. Yeah, so. And in here, they've got... 
just an opportunity to add some color there. And I'm going to bring this up and bring these up. So there's oftentimes just constant uh, adjustment, but it's not a big deal unless you make it a big deal. See how I'm flowing here? Instead of holding my uh, hand down there and just, and then move, you know, get in the, and we've talked about this in other lessons, how you can just flow right to your destination. And it's the same with, for example, if you were drawing a car. One of the challenges is the wheels. So if you can freely flow and have done enough circles to where you can draw a circle without having to stop and but you get a nice tire, a wheel. And that makes all the difference in terms of having a car really look good because you're able to get a wheel that actually looks like a wheel. So, so to be able to flow uh, with your drawing is, it takes practice, no doubt about it, but if you enjoy drawing, then you don't, you're not really looking at it like practice, you're simply enjoying what you're doing, right? So, okay, so that gives us a basic um, idea of the dragonfly itself. Now, if we go back to the beginning here, I added some flowers down here. So we're going to Now, in this coloring book, there's a couple of actual pages that they give you an idea of what colors they uh, suggest or recommend, um, and that's a good thing. You want to be able to do your own, but it's nice to to see what the possibilities are. Okay, so what they have here, and then they have, so this little area like that gives you an opportunity to add a little color there, different than the flower itself, right? So, so there's that. Then you've got a stem that comes off of there. And then we have These can be leaves, thin leaves um, that go with the flowers. They're green, as you can see. And so they can be, can be grass. It can be a lot of different things, so. And then I put another flower on the other side because you have a couple of 
several different colors, variants of the purple family. And so I'll put this other one over here so that we can have a little variety. And then, you know, how thick or thin or, you know, all these different areas that add a variety of color, that's strictly up to you. Um, you're the artist. At whatever level that you're on, so, Enjoy the creative process of choosing the colors that you want to use or every different element throughout the whole process. That is totally up to you. Okay, so we have something to begin with here. And so now I want to do a little erasing. So I'm going to turn this over to hopefully be able to get rid of all the pencil lines that I don't want there. And without here again trying to keep this, this is a nice paper, is it, I think 90 pound pressed paper. And so it's not flimsy, but it's really easy to, when you're trying to erase large areas in particular, to scrunch it, and we don't want no scrunching allowed. So, okay. All right, let's see at that. So we're just making sure that we got most of the pencil lines, so. Okay, so now it's about choosing some color. Now there's no, um, so it's strictly up to us. So I think I'm gonna try this orange. I like this orange. So. So as you know, it takes time. It takes what it takes to get enough color on there to stand out the way you want a particular area to stand out. So, that's what we're going to do. Don't want to take up too much time, but at the same time, we want to get it close to the 
where we would like it to be. So that's, and that's an individual thing, just like everything else. And so that's, hopefully, you take that as seriously as I do in terms of what I want when I'm creating something. But when you really stop and think about it, it really is uh, satisfying and rewarding to know that even in uh, a simplistic way of looking at it, the ability to to draw something, to create something. Take a blank page and just between the drawing and the coloring, whether you're using colored pencils or whether you're using watercolor or oil paints or acrylics or whatever it is, just to be able to create, to draw something that you have in your mind or that you see out here that is really something you want to duplicate, uh, change it to the way you would like it to, you just that ability to change a blank space into something. I mean, it just, and like anything in life, it takes doing it. The more you do it, the easier it gets, and the better you're able to create what is in your mind in terms of what you would like to be creating. So imagination is a powerful thing. So, so I remember and I think I've probably told this story many times, but when I was teaching myself how to draw, because uh, none of my art teachers, you know, when you're in a classroom situation, there's so many students, and so trying to, to get the personal attention that you need sometimes is very difficult. And anyway, it was so, it took hours and hours and hours for me to get to the point where I could actually draw something. But then it wasn't until I went to Mission Renaissance School of Fine Art that they showed me a way to get there. Okay, so that's that. Now I think I'm going to jump into a blue because these colors go nicely together. So.
Mm-hmm. So as I'm doing this part, I'm also thinking so that it doesn't all look the same. I'm going to take the main one of these images here and I'm going to add I think a red to it and see how that so and part of this pr process is okay as we're going along we're coming up with something you I could have done something ahead of time but really didn't want to I wanted to go with the flow see how I felt at the time that we're actually doing this and so the, I like the idea of the blue but then I also like the idea of changing the color so that it's not too boring of being the same. Right? So... Aha! So that brings up another possibility. And that is, I wasn't sure what I was going to do in the background. But now I do. You see, and that comes from not being afraid to just uh, let things develop. Not be so, well, it's got to be this way or that way. This is the only way it can be. No, it isn't. In fact, see how nicely this is coming together? Yeah. Very nice, I must say. And that's just, and that too is part of the creative process. Having the courage, if you will, to just go with the flow. I think I'm going to actually do that last one. I was going to do it red, but I think I'm going to do it blue too. And then the rest of that pink. So there we are. Pretty cool. So you'll perhaps want to do something totally different and that's just fine. That's what this is all about. So. And if you'll recall, the first rule or guide or observation and then simple shapes, draw lightly, Now 
this one doesn't have to be exactly like that one. Um, then relationship and repetition. And so I wanted to throw in some repetition here because so you do a dragonfly, you, you got the basic shape of the wings and everything, and then what about doing this or that? So you do another one, and you can do a bunch of them, and they're all different, and you learn something different from each one, but as you draw each dragonfly, your ability to draw that dragonfly just becomes so much easier because of the repetition. And that's what those rules or guides are for, that if you understand them, it makes it easier for you to apply what you're learning. So, That's why doing another dragonfly, just, it is what it is, that's all. It's just, could be anything. Just happens to be another dragonfly, which I happen to like. And who's doing the lesson? Oh! You mean I should be able to do what I want? Kelly? Who do I think I am? So that's part of enjoying what you're doing. If you're enjoying it, the chances are what you actually create is going to be something special. So here again, like in these finer areas, the sharper your pencil, the better, colored or otherwise. And then, as you get to the larger areas, then you don't want much of a point so that so by doing these areas first while you're wearing down that point and you're soon ready for the larger areas the upper wings anyway. And then, well, let me see, let me just get a little more right in here. Okay. Now, I want to do something different. I think, let's see what that is. Let's try this one. You, I want the two wings to go together, but I don't want it to be um, I don't want it to stand out too much. I don't want one to take away from the other. Um, 
So this is a nice leaning towards a gold in terms of the yellow family. And so, <coughs> excuse me, that can very nicely, I think, go with that. Then already I'm thinking about, well, what am I going to do for the background? As I put the color on this particular wing, Okay, so uh, let's see, I'm going to put this over here. That's I think we're gonna try that. going to blend a little more than what we have above, but I think if we don't make it too dark, because it is a darker value, same family, but that will be a good example of do you want the background to be closer? you know, to the, design, or, a, more of a contrast, like, what you have in the, larger wing, and that's sometimes something you don't know until you try it, uh, but that's why it's nice to have scratch paper, that you can test a color, test the colors together, you know, whatever you need to do to get to the point where you want to get. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I kind of like this color. So I'm going to use a little darker version of it by making sure. See, see the difference? Now that it's darkened, I can use that same color over here, but it looks different. Ah. That, you know, I love these, I love these uh, soft core pencils, but one thing I don't like is it's constantly breaking when you have to darken it. And it's usually colors that I use a lot. So, that's even worse. I've been, the yellow that I, I did not, the one that I just used, but the lighter version, the real yellow, that's one of those that I end up breaking. So, try to find a balance between getting the color that you want and so then I'm going to go right down the middle here and I'm going to do the head as well and 
right down the middle. Then, this is so light, I don't know if it will even show up. Yeah. Not. I wonder what that will do. Hmm. So this is just to get rid of the white. You know, I'm not a big fan of white, but it has its place, just not right here. So I'm going to do those edges there too. Okay. All right, so that takes care of that. So now we've got these beautiful flowers. So let me, oh, let's see, no, let me put these back. And the pink, okay, so, I think I'm gonna use this one for the center. And we can do the same over here with a lighter color will look very different. the purple family. I don't know if I actually have a real dark. Oh, okay, that should do the trick. Well, it certainly isn't as dark as that, but get the idea. So the texture of the paper too even though it may not look like there's much of a texture, you really notice it when you're using colored pencils. That's where the white shows up, and that's where the, the, the pressure that you apply in order to eliminate as much of that white coming through as possible. But that's where I end up breaking the, the lead and it doesn't take too many times of that for you to end up with out that color and buying the individual colors is so much more expensive than buying the set, but then you end up buying colors that you don't use so much. So like anything in life, there's a give and take. So what are you going to do? But even the other, now these, both of the sets that I have are the Prismacolors. The newest ones are the soft core, but even the other ones you can break, I, I can break. So, uh, 
but it's just the way that this soft core flows is just really quite nice. And no, I'm not getting paid by Prismacolor, but uh, that's a good thought. Uh, <laughs> if you can line me up, uh, please do. <laughs> Okay, so well, you get the idea on that. So now we're going to add a little color here. stem here. So I, I combined these two different uh, drawings for the coloring book, different pages. This part came from another one that they actually showed the color and so I thought that's a good one to, I'll just add that to the dragonfly. So, and that's part of the, of the process that we've been talking about. For you to take a little from here, take a little from there, to create, um, you know, for example, like the dragonfly, the this particular drawing of them has the wings kind of squared off which they don't normally do and so that was one of the reasons that i did that one it's just a different process so <coughs> Okay, I'm going to put that there, and then I'm going to see if this will work. Different enough, but in the same hue. Um, Looks like this is going to work out very nicely time-wise. We can get everything in here. Now with the lighter color like this, the kind of the white showing through there doesn't matter as much. kind of consistent with the 
pastel look that we're going for here. And of course this would be, this could be a darker color, but I like with the one that uh, was actually using as the guide, um, it's closer to that. And, and the other thing too is, like this set that I have has 36 colors, but that's pretty limited when you stop and think that some of them have, what, 150 colors? So there are all these values between in every hue that you have. And so very, very different. You have so many more choices. So somewhat limited here, but the bottom line is that's what I have. And I don't think there are too many beginners out there with, uh, shall we say, 120, 130 colors in your coloring tools, shall we say. So, I mean, it would be nice. It's just all about the money, you know. But for most of us, we can do what we want to do with less. That's part of the creative process too, is what can you do with what you have? Well, as we put the finishing touches on this, the last of the blades of grass or leaves or whatever you think they are, I will say thank you for joining me and happy drawing.